Hi everyone, this is Dimitri Pragmatic with MarketChameleon.com. I wanted to go over option prices and theoretical values, and I'm going to show a different way you could do a theoretical value uh, other than using the Black-Scholes or binomial model, and I think this one's a little bit easier to understand. So I'm going to go, and we're, what we're going to do is use the historical price return distribution to estimate the value of an option. And to make it easier, I'm just going to pick one option. I went here to Microsoft Options Chain, 14 days to go. And let's do an out-of-the-money option. Right now, Microsoft was 138.46. In this example, we'll go use the 142 call. I'm going to click on the Ask side of the market. And this pops open over here, the option that we're, we're buying this option. And the first thing is, if you load the strategy, it's going to show you the payoff diagram at expiration. But we're really interested in the theoretical value. So I'm going to jump to that right now and the way this works is right now it's looking at the market is 81 cents 83 cents and we're looking we pressed on the buy side here and it's estimating a value of a dollar 62 using four years of data um, before I show you how to get there let's just change that and I'm gonna put that up to eight years of data here and I'm gonna just reload it so now we're using eight years of data we have a dollar 37 theoretical value versus the market 81 cents 83 cents so it thinks it's a, uh it's undervalued and there's a 54 cent edge 54 cents of edge um on the buy side this is the historical win rate 33.3 percent meaning that if you did this similar trade with four with the stock with 14 trading days to go and an option that's 2.6 percent out of the money um and at, at an 83 cent um, premium, then there historically there's a 33.3 percent uh, win rate. And let's just go into the historical price return distribution and see how we got that there. Um, and these are the summary statistics here. And when you press view, then you get the the supporting data. So the first thing we look at is we know that in 14 trading days and 14 trade trading day hold in Microsoft, um, if at the end of 14 trading days, the stock is below 142 strike. In this example, it does not increase by 2.6%. Uh, this option will be worthless. So how frequently did that happen in a 14-day trading period? So then we look over here, and that's this analytic here. How often did it finish below 2.6% out of our 108 observations? Um, that happened 61% of the time. So Historically, 61% of the time, this option would end up being worthless or zero. So then we want to test as well, how often did it get above this 142 strike at the end of 14 trading days? So that depends. If it's above 142, then it really depends how high it also got um, above 142, then this option will have a value um, at expiration. So then we look at uh, above 2.6%, that happened 39% of the observations in the last eight years. And the average return of those up moves has been 5.1% that went above here, which gave us a theoretical average value of $3.53 this 39% of the time. So let's just look at the data here below, and this is how it works. Um, between this date and this date, a 14-day hold period, the stock increased 1%, which would mean that this stock, would Microsoft would end up at 139.88 um, from the current price, which would mean that this option would be worthless or zero. Uh, between this date and this date, it was a 14-day hold period, the stock increased 5.1%. So if, it, if the stock increases 5.1% um, next, at the end of the next 14 days, then Microsoft will be 145.46, which would mean this option would be worth $3.46 at expiration. So it keep, continues to do this all throughout the history. And then what you do is get the average value of the option, which is over here, $1.37. So in other words, if you did the same trade over and over and over again, historically, um, the average value of that option would have been a dollar thirty-seven. Then we go here. What is the win rate? So the win rate is measuring well how how frequently did did it result in a profit if you did it at eighty-three cents. So in other words, this was below eighty-three cents. That was a loss. This is above 
83 cents, that's a win. So it goes down the line and says, well, how frequently did it get uh, theoretically above 83 cents? That happened 33.3% of the time. So that's that's what this number is over here. Now, now over here, what do we also have in the yellow? What this is saying is that the strike is 2.6% away, but to break even, you need it needed to go up 3.2%, which is the strike strike price plus the option premium. So in this case, it's 3.2%. And probability of touch here is saying, well, how frequently did the stop increase by at least 3.2% or more at any given time in this 14-day hold? So not just not just at expiration, but any time to the highest point did it go above 3.2. So you can see here, uh, even though it finished up 1% at the end of 14 trading days, the high is 4.4%. So in this case, it would have at least touched it or gone above that 3.2% level. So it keeps going down the line, and that happened 48.1% of the time um, that at least touched that break-even point or went higher that the stock increased enough to to uh, touch that or go higher. That happened 48.1% of the time. And so that's how you would get the theoretical value to see how the option prices are compared now to a historical theoretical value using uh, historical price return distributions. Now, if we go back and let's say we want to do a spread, then you would just create the spread by clicking on the this option. So the, at, for this option, I clicked on the ask, we would be on the buy side. This option, let's click on a bid. So I'm doing a call spread, buying this strike, selling this strike. I'm going to reload it. That's what it looks like at expiration. And then again, we go to theoretical value. And here's the theoretical value. Here's the price now. So this looks a little bit underpriced using four years. Historical return distributions. Again, we could just keep increasing that. Let's do 10 years. So even on 10 years, it looks um, still... A little bit under price you know this had a 55.1 percent historical win rate with an average uh and value of a dollar 62 versus a dollar 36 a dollar 42 market right now um so that's one way then you could use the historical price return distributions to create uh a theoretical value uh for an option or strategy um which is a little bit different than using the binomial or black shoals model uh, which is a little bit more complicated. It's still, it's a good model, but a little bit more complicated to understand. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. See you next video.